Economist. So here he makes, of course, a very nice bulldog, looking sort of <laughs> hang dog baggy eyes. And um, she looks like a professional looking character. She doesn't appear to be a charlatan here. She looks, has a degree of sincerity, a degree of intelligence in her face. But she seems to, at the same time, happily tolerate this monster, blindly unaware or completely used to this ridiculous situation. He had yet even declared running for president, and I had been asked to do a caricature of him for an inside piece. And we were able to conjure up one photo, one tiny photo of him from God knows when or where. The thing about photographs, any one picture of an individual tells a lie about them. That's the very first one I did. And then uh, he sort of evolved... When Bill first came into office, they came flying in uh, with great confidence and cockiness. And then when Newt Gingrich and the Republicans came in to take over Congress, his life was a lot more difficult. And he spent a couple of years certainly in this mode until he sort of righted himself and, and reinvented himself slightly. Hmm. And probably if he saw this cartoon, he probably turned his color. So here, back in 1996, I think you never knew which guy was going to appear when you saw him. And he uh, was doing the triangulation thing where he was running the, the Democrats, his own party, off against the Republicans and sort of doing what was good for Bill Clinton in between. I, I was never a, a huge fan of Bill Clinton, uh, but I, I think by this time I was feeling particularly frustrated with him. Uh, yeah, the bulb on the end of, of Clinton's nose was a wonderful device. It was almost, I, I, when I was drawing it, I always wanted to make sure I felt like that. If you squeezed it, it would honk. Ride that horsey. I like that horse. Okay. Trying to make Bill Clinton chisel himself into stone was tricky because he has a face that doesn't look like it's made of stone. It looks like it's made out of mashed potatoes. It's sort of soft. It's, it's fudgy. It's pudgy. And doesn't look like it would really fit well on Mount Rushmore. January 24th, 1998. Hmm. There was enough revenues for the government to actually have spending choices that a uh, you know president would love to have. We we're beginning to come out of debt as a nation. And so we were doing an article, the lead article for the magazine, about the State of the Union address that was coming up and how Bill Clinton would have these different type of spending options. Well... The Wednesday, the day that my cover was, was due to be finished, I'd finished the artwork handed in. That very same day, the Monica Lewinsky story broke. But we didn't have to change the cover. The emphasis changed from the sweets that they were offering to the sweeties who were offering it. <laughs> he was looking at a sweetie. I wonder if I changed his eye angle when we knew what the, <laughs> what the, what the story was. This is based on the sort of hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, but when, you know, Everyone saw the evil that uh, he was trying to hide. His his legacy is is maybe more like marshmallow. You know, it's sort of um, a little bit firm when you first get it, but when you squeeze hard, it um, it realizes that it's sticky and um, you can't wait to get rid of it. I really like getting a new face and playing with it and moving it around and learning it over time. So when somebody's been on, been around for eight years, and I think I might have gotten them by that end of that time, I'm happy to put them on the shelf revisit them every now and then but it'd be like like you know certain members of your family you just hope that they stay seated you know during the wedding the <laughs> um increasingly as bill clinton sticks around i miss him less and less hmm. <laughs>